time to take your seat. Hello, Chamber.
Now I'm here with Lomper Town boss Dara Doyle after a 3-0 defeat against St Pat's. Dara, you scratching your head a little bit as to how it's a 3-0 game in the end? Yeah, no, we are. I think you look at the first half, I thought we played really, really well. There was some great stuff played by us. We caused them a number of problems. We made it difficult for them to play. They didn't really create anything that looked to cause us any concern. And um, then we start the second half and listen, again, it's a mistake that gives them a goal in our six yard box. Mm -hmm. and. Listen, it's, it's really tough to concede in a way like that because we probably didn't deserve it. I mean, how the game was 3-0, it's because we made two mistakes and there's a wonder goal. Mm. Other than that, Mick hasn't really anything else to do. You've got to give Chris Forrester credit for his second goal. It was an outstanding strike, top corner. And Should someone get out to him a bit yeah, quicker? Yeah, listen, we look and we talked about that. And listen, we see Chris as well. He's done that with players around him where he can still yeah. do that. We look at it again and see exactly could it have happened. I think it was from a second ball that went back in that came out. So, again, something to look at a little bit, I suppose. And then... In, a mistake late in the game where mm. we should deal with the ball and instead it bounces we let it bounce we let someone get in front of us and you know it punishes us in 3-0 and you look at how we performed there today there was outstanding performances out there from Longford Town players there was mistakes made that listen I need to deal with and make sure that that's sorted and I will but what we have to be is positive going into the games ahead of us we can't feel sorry for ourselves that we've been beaten 3-0 here today we're mm. disappointed but we need to react to it we need to play well we've been very competitive against St. Pat's today who are top of the league and Listen, like you said, it's it's tough to be out here talking losing that game three 0 mm. once we had so many strong performances on the pitch, and that's what's disappointing with today overall. Mm. What do you put down the number of individual mistakes to? Because obviously the game against Waterford, we yeah. discussed the individual mm. mistake there, and two in this game, it's frustrating. No, it is, and and, and um, listen, something I'll have to rectify on my side with in, in team selections, and, and I will do that. Um, it gives people a chance to come in and nail down a place. We have a number of players that haven't probably played as many games as they like in, in certain positions on the team. And listen, there's a chance there for some one or two players possibly over the coming weeks. And we know people that can come in that have done well for this club over the last couple of years will stand up to the challenge that's ahead of them. And listen, we need to cut out their mistakes because you look how competitive we've been in every single game this year. I mean, last week against Waterford, we were done by a mistake. Mm. Other than that, Waterford are not winning that game. Um, and today, it's, it's a 3-0 game, but we've put in a strong performance. Um, obviously, it doesn't get any easier now. It's uh, Dundalk up next. Mm. Um, how do you go about creating more chances? Are you concerned at the moment that maybe you're not creating enough chances? Yeah, we'd, we'd like to test the keeper a little bit more, of course. But I felt we, we, I mean, we won the ball back from him in that middle throw an awful game. We countered well, but probably lacked a little final bit to, to test the keeper at times. We had Dobbsy in a couple of dangerous positions. Dean Bourne had a shot late in the game. There's a header from Chambers from across to the back post that he can possibly do better with. And we've one or two other ones, but I think Robin and, and mm. Force is a good tackle late in the game. So it's just not, I suppose, going for us exactly on that front. But I mean, we've got to be consistent in, in what we're doing, and we will be. We'll be preparing for each game. We'll be ready for what's ahead of us, and, and we feel we can pick up a result in every single game mm. we play. Again, you've lost a player as well inside the opening half an hour. I think that's the third time this season in seven games. That's that's incredibly unlucky. Uh, how are the bodies after that? Is there any injury yeah, updates? It's, it's one of those. We, we look with um, Paddy Kirk, obviously, with, with the left calf, and we'll have to see how that is over the coming days. So um, we'll see if he's able to train on Sunday in, in the build-up to Monday's game. We won't know really more on it until tomorrow. At the minute, it, it probably looks a little unlikely. But listen, we'll have players that can come in and put in another shift for us and, and that's something we might have to look at over the weekend so um, it was good to see Dean Zambra he trained fully yesterday so it might be a chance for Dean to get back in and get some minutes in the team and so, Dean Byrne back as well and Dean Byrne great to see him out there and he looked sharp at the time yeah. I think he won a ball quite high and I think he whipped the shot it probably was only a yard or two far of the back post with Rob Manley sliding in there so um, I mean Aaron Dobbs caused him so many problems mm. there in the first half again he was really good and you know, he'd be disappointed he probably didn't score a goal himself. So, um, no, listen, we can only keep at it, keep looking at a positive way of what's ahead of us because we're in all these games and because of our own 
doing mm. we've conceded chances that have cost us the game you've mentioned Dobbs there again I thought he was fantastic I'm going to annoy you about mm. it again this week a lot yeah. of people would have loved to have seen you gone two up top I know you brought Sam yeah. on and he was playing quite close yeah. to, to Aaron and then Aaron goes off with an injury as well but um, are you just being careful with the amount of games coming up that you want to have that option there of Rob or, or Aaron yeah listen you do have to have that and I think if you go two up you open yourself up in midfield to a team with a huge amount of quality in that central part of the pitch and that's what I've heard teams over the last couple of weeks that they've played games so we felt it was important that we win the midfield and we felt we did win the midfield for large parts of that game so you know when, when you, happen, you, you can't really you know what, what, what yeah. can you do yeah. as such I mean a lot of our game plan went how we wanted to go we won the ball off them in the middle tour an awful lot we forced so many mistakes we targeted one or two of their players see that which players was giving the ball away for them consistently so I mean, we've prepared well, but unfortunately the result hasn't gone away. Yeah, they are uh, honest as always. Thanks very much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks very much. Welcome to the LTFC Sunday show. It's Kieran Burke and Gary Riley from the Longford Town Media team. Unfortunately, we're here to discuss a 3-0 defeat at Richmond Park against the league leaders, St. Patrick's Athletic. But Gary, opening 45 minutes, very even contest. In fact, I think it's fair to say Longford probably shaded the opening half. But then I'm not sure, is it, is it a, a loss of concentration or maybe an individual mistake just right after the restart? Uh, Pat score to go ahead and after that it falls asunder yeah it really fell to bits after that alright um, I thought we were the far, by far the better team I wouldn't even say shaded it I was expecting far more from Pats in the first half but Longford were on the front foot from kind of the get go and were probably not creating enough of chances using that possession and stuff that we did have in the game um, particularly in the first half I thought we were very good and very solid um, but well, two minutes into the second half, it kind of all really goes pear-shaped and an individual mistake. I couldn't really see what it was, but it didn't look great from where I was sitting and I was a good bit away from it. So uh, where I was watching it on, on Watch LOI, uh, I doubt they were treated to a great bit of defending and that really fell to bits after that. I think concentration was lost and stuff like that. Brilliant goal from Forrester, an absolute belter of a goal. Should someone's yeah, close that, 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 That's the thing. I think uh, Aaron O'Driscoll went out to, to, to block it, um, a centre-back yeah. went out to block a ball. So he probably had to run by five or six players to block that ball and he didn't get there. Um, Let's not take it away from Forrester. It was a, a world-class strike, but as you said, somebody has to get out to him. Someone has to get out to him, of, of course. But, but my, as, you know, as I said, why is Aaron O'Driscoll taking that ownership? Mm. Um, uh, look, I, I can only remember the ball going in and, and that being that, but sure. Look, we'll um, we'll see what we, you know, as time goes on, we'll have to reassess it, but we don't really have very much time mm. to do it. Monday's coming. To, to be, yeah, have a good point. To be fair to Longford, um, even after they concede that second goal, they actually probably get on the front foot then. Um, I know they didn't create very many, if any, chances tonight, yeah. but they had a little spell in the game where they were on top and they were forcing their way back into the game. A little bit like the game against Daly Mount Park, uh, or against Bowes. They were easing themselves into the game and if they could have got a goal then you never know what happens. And I mean, there's plenty of attacking players on the pitch then from Longford, but that doesn't come and unfortunately then there's another mistake towards the end and it's 3-0 in the end. It probably was never a 3-0 game, but no. that's what the scoreline no, reads. I, I was, you know, from a past perspective, I was surprised, um, I still am surprised to see that at the top of the table. Um, I thought they were quite limited in a lot of their play and stuff like that so it, it kind of even compounds the disappointment in the loss yeah. um, I didn't think we were far away from it but an individual mistake a belter of a goal um, and another individual mistake really killed it uh, but it put a, a lot of shine on a game that did have a lot of quality but not much quality in and around either goal um, Are you worried about the lack of chances we're creating at the moment? Um, I am to a certain extent but also not at the same time you know we were missing a lot of players um, you know, we uh, we had to make another change um, early on uh, today as well, um, but look, that's going to happen. But at the same time, it, it damages the game plan. Do you mm. know what I mean? It damages the, how we want to set up and how we want to play um, when someone else has to come in and take over. Not saying that they're inferior in any way. It's just if a game plan is like is X. And then it has to change. Some part of that has to change. That that's going to be difficult to recover from. As you said, Monday is coming quick. Um, Dundalk uh, coming down to Bishopsgate. It's another really tough game. It is a tough game, and they're going to keep coming. Uh, Derry won't be easy to, um, to follow on Friday either. So, I think, you know, as the saying goes, you just have to take every game as it comes. <laughs> but at the same time, we have to. The mistakes have to be eradicated. If we don't we can say goodbye uh, to the Premier Division as quick as it, as it came. Mm. Um, if we don't eradicate those mistakes, we throw our hat at it. Um, mm. So, 
Look, it's not going to be an easy game on Monday. Um, we won't find the coming, as the fella said, but I think we have to shake off this game, shake off the individual mistakes, and try and be a bit more solid. I thought some of the some of the play in the first half was to take, can take a lot of encouragement from it. And there was lots of really good individual performances, just to name a Absolutely. few. A. Durbin, probably his best game of the season, bar maybe the Derry game. Uh, Carl Chambers, fantastic as well. Chambers Aaron O'Driscoll, as ever, didn't put a foot wrong. Yeah. Uh, there was others I could name as well. Um, so there is positives. It's just yeah, as Dobbs, you said, Dobbs, Aaron Dobbs, Dobbs, how could I forget brilliant. him, of course. Yeah. Game, uh, yeah. And hopefully he's okay because he went off with a knock. Yeah. Um, and as you said, we picked up a bit of uh, um, a bit of battle wounds tonight. So as Gary says, a disappointing night here at Richmond, but the game's come thick and fast. It's Dundalk coming down to Bishopsgate on Monday and then a long trip up to the Brandywell the following Friday. So plenty of opportunities for Longford to pick up some points as the first series of games comes to its conclusion. But from uh, Kieran and Gary from Richmond Park, thanks for watching. to take your seat.